Becky is with us in Prescott, Arizona. Hi, Becky. Welcome to the Ramsey Show. Hi, Dave. Hi, Ken. Good to talk to you, too. You, too. I'm, um, I'm uh, kind of needing your help. I have a daughter who's uh, married and has a little two-year-old, and they both are teachers. She's a stay-at-home online teacher. He teaches for, for a small public school. They would like to buy a home, and they really don't have the income to do it. And I would like to help, but I'd like your advice of what are some possibilities for helping them get a home. I know you said don't outright buy it and then have them rent and be tenants because that makes Thanksgiving dinner very strange. But what, what ideas do you have for helping our kids get into a home if they don't have the funds to do? to get that started. Okay. Well, uh, the first thing is, is that if you help someone get into a situation that harms them, that by definition is not helping them. And I think that is mm-hmm. the core of what you're asking as to how to do this wisely so that they're not harmed. But when you say they can't afford it three times in your question, um, that scares me a little. Um, that they just don't make enough to pay the payments we're about to sign them up for. We don't want to do that, right? Right. And yeah. I know you say 25% of your take home yeah. should be what is going towards that house. Yeah. Um, so maybe the way you the, help yeah, them is you coach them a little on their careers. Maybe the way you help them is we coach them on their budgeting and get them out of debt. They need to be out of debt and have an emergency fund before they talk about buying a house. But if they're managing money really well on their modest income, and they're out of debt, and they have their emergency fund, and they just don't have enough down payment, and you want to give them $100,000 of your $5 million for them to be able to buy a house as a bigger down payment as a gift, I don't have any issue with that at all. I don't want you to give someone, anyone, money who's misbehaving with it because you are not blessing them. No, they're doing actually well. I put them through FPU. They have been on a budget. Uh, They are not in debt. They have their emergency fund, but that leap, especially with real estate, uh, and and tell me this, do you think this is the time to buy it and one should wait uh, on buying a home? What's your opinion on the timing right now? Well, the market's really hot, obviously. It's white hot, and um, uh, uh, it's it's not a buyer's market. It's a seller's market. So, it, but mm-hmm. does that mean you can't buy right now? No, but I mean, you just have to be wise. Don't get in a, you, you've seen these movie scenes like with an old Jerry Lewis movie where somebody gets super excited at an auction and loses their mind and bids like seven times what something's worth. That's what some people are doing with houses right now. And so you don't want to do that. Mm-hmm. You don't want to lose your mind. And uh, there are people that have lost their minds in this market. Uh, and so if you can be calm and wise and walk away from enough deals to find one that is a reasonable purchase in their situation, then again, it's not, you can't say no, don't buy in this market, but it's a difficult market to get a, a reasonable to good buy in because it is a seller's market without a doubt. So here's the thing. Um, I had a friend who uh, gave his children the money to pay cash for their first home after mm-hmm. they were behaving with money wisely and were saving and they were getting ready to just go get a normal mortgage and he just gave them money. He's worth hundreds of millions of dollars. He had the money. It wasn't a big deal. And uh, so they bought like an $800,000 house or whatever and he just bought it and handed it to him. No strings attached. The only thing he did ask them to do, because he's like you and me, Becky, he's a Financial Peace University person, right? And he said, um, I, I just want you to sign a letter swearing you'll never borrow money again. That's all I want you to do. So that my grandkids never go in debt if I, do, if I give a gift that the, the, is this lavish, that we truly have broken the chain mathematically on this family tree. And, uh, and, he, and then he stepped back and was not controlling and didn't interfere in their life, didn't question their vacations or anything else. He just wanted to keep their word, what they said they would do. And uh, that way, that's the last person in his family tree to borrow money. And, you know, those kids, are, those kids were millionaires almost instantaneously as a result, because of their, their net worth. Yeah, I, I think that's absolutely the right advice. And Becky, you know, uh, they're a young couple. Seems like they're doing all the right things. And and the reality is, is help them be patient. 
and you yourself need to be patient in this time, you know? And so it's, look, it's going to cool off at some point, even if it doesn't, you you have the discipline, like Dave said, to be able to walk away from those deals. And uh, I, I think you're a great lady with a great heart, but you know, this, every young couple wants to get in a house. And the reality is, is that it's never worth getting in a house, but not being able to do what you need to do to take care of it, to be able to, you know, fix it up. And I think that's a temptation right now. And sometimes people are making too big of a, a, a rather too quick of a leap into this. And, and I'll tell you, you have to be real careful of the tendency for control in these situations. Um, it, I'll just share with you that, Becky, I think the hardest stage of parenting is when your children are grown because you can no longer tell them what to do. Mm. And you just, ha- you, you know, not if you want, well, you can, you can tell them what to do, but it doesn't work. <laughs> so, but I mean, you, you know, you just have to, my, I, my kids, thank God, have not done a bunch of stupid stuff, but I'm, I'm of the age that my friends have grown kids that are 35 or 40 years old or, or 25 years old. And the, the kid is off the ranch and, you know, doing stupid stuff and you can't, stupid is not illegal. Mm. And it is very difficult to have good relational boundaries with your grown children for all of us, me included, um, I do, but my kids have also been taught well enough about boundaries. When I don't, they, they step in and uh, remind me. Uh, but, but if you're going to get in a financial transaction like this where you're giving them some money, then you really got to fight that urge to control, that urge that does not give you additional rights to speak into their life. You got to cut bait emotionally, walk away, act like for the rest of your life you didn't give them a dime. Mm, it's good. And, and here's something else on that line, Dave, I think that you're right about this. You know, a lot of parents, uh, they're still the most influential voice in their adult kid's life. And this young couple's in a good place right now. They don't have debt. They're on a budget. Uh, the emergency they are fund listening is, to Becky, and that's yeah, why. Which is great. But don't put pressure on them that already exists from culture, which says, you got to buy a house, you got to buy a house, you know. And, and I think sometimes parents unwittingly uh, will steer kids in the wrong direction just because – you feel that cultural pressure as well. They're in good shape, and they've got time. They're a young couple. You know, prior to 1970, uh, for a uh, young married couple to buy a home in their first five years of marriage was highly unusual. Yeah, I think that's a good thing. It was it was highly unusual. Only in the last couple of generations right. have we deemed it mandatory. Yeah. You, you know, you've been married five minutes. What's wrong with you? Yeah. You know, and I'm not saying Becky's doing that. No. But there's no, a no, thing no. out there that's that that is that thing. Yeah. It's very real, and, and so just be careful with all of it. But it sounds like she's being very wise. I didn't hear anything in there, except she's really worried about them being able to afford the payments they're all about to sign up for. Yeah. And you got to be careful with that one.